Welcome everyone. My name is Kate with Scott Leroy Marketing. Today I'm going to be going over designs with you. Um, so hopefully that is the class you're here for. Um, we're going to take a look at um, creating a marketing marketing uh, graphic within command for social posting, um, as well as creating an email signature in command. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to go to command. So if you're not sure how to access command, um, that will be at agent.kw.com. Um, and you can go ahead and enter your username and password to sign in. Um, keep in mind with these logins, your username is not case sensitive. So if you have a capital letter missing, it's not going to impact you logging in. However, your password is case sensitive. So if you're missing something uh, capitalized or not, um, it will cause you to get an error. Um, you can always click the little eyeball and take a look to make sure that everything is typed correctly. Um, if you're still seeing an error, make sure there are no spaces uh, before or after your password, um, because that will also cause that to error. Um, but if for any reason you're still having trouble, you can hit that forgot password, uh, enter your username, and uh, reset that. I'm going to go ahead and log in, though. Now, once we're in command and everything loads, uh, keep in mind yours may look a little bit different than mine. Uh, command is a customizable, um, to some extent, uh, platform. So you can customize the dashboard and things like that. So yours may look a little bit different. Um, for today's class, the first place we're gonna start um, for designs is the marketing profile. Uh, now today's class, a lot of the, materials in here won't pull from the marketing profile, but for every design I start here, just because some of this information can pull over into designs for various marketing profiles or for various marketing, I'm sorry. Uh, so we always come here first just to make sure everything is up to date. Uh, if you missed how I got here, I clicked on my name when I was in command and went to settings. Once we're in settings, you go to connect settings and marketing profile. Um, once you're there, you do want to make sure this is turned on so that those various pieces do pull over to your marketing. Um, and you do want to make sure you have everything that is required. So it has a little red asterisk. You want to make sure those are um, included. Now, the team logo is not required. However, that does pull to some pieces of marketing. So you are going to want to make sure you have something there. Otherwise, in various different pieces of marketing, it will appear broken. Uh, within the design or graphic. Um, other things, your name, obviously. Um, license number is another one that can appear broken on certain pieces of marketing if you don't have that included. Um, so we do recommend including that. Uh, basically, when in doubt, fill out as much as you can when you're on here. Uh, market center information is required. If you have any compliance that needs to be added or graphics, you can add those here. Um, social media and Google Analytics. Um, then you go ahead and hit save. Uh, we're not going to spend a ton of time in the marketing profile today because, again, I don't think too many of our pieces that we're working on today pull from that, uh, but I do like to just cover it really quickly. Um, so for today's class, we're actually going to take a look at designs. Um, if you're not sure which one is designs, it looks like a little uh, canvas or paper uh, with a paintbrush. Um, and also you can hover over that. It will give you the designs next to it. Or you can hit this red and white KW to expand those, and it will give you the names next to each of them. So we're going to go ahead and click Designs. Now, once we're in here, the first thing I want to do um, on top of the marketing profile is check out our brand assets. Um, so in order to get to those, we want to hit Import Design. And then once that loads, we'll give it just a minute here. All right, once that loads, we wanna take a look at this assets section. So the reason we wanna take a look here is when we're creating designs in command, it's super helpful to have certain things in there that you can easily pull in without having to upload them every time you wanna use them. Uh, for example, your headshot, uh, your logo, your market center logo, um, 
maybe your branded app link or your website link, uh, things like that, that you may not want to type out or pull in every single time. Your assets are different pieces of marketing that you can easily pull into your designs. Uh, your assets is basically like your library of your different items. Um, so there are two different categories within here. The first one is Keller Williams uh, Realty. Uh, so if you take a look at these, they have specific colors and fonts that are part of their assets. Um, now these will always show up within your designs for you to utilize. They also have images. This is a great place to come to look for stock images. Um, if you're trying to create a specific graphic and you need a photo, um, you can always check out their pictures. They have a ton of various pictures. Um, they even have folders. So they have market expert, miscellaneous, holidays, um, house interiors, app images. You have lifestyle at home, lifestyle activities, neighborhoods, and house exteriors. So you can kind of pick those and it will give you various different images based on that specific category um, to where you can create whatever graphic you're trying to create. Um, market expert gives you some data. Um, if you see these spinning circles, we generally recommend to wait until those have loaded. If you get click happy like I do sometimes, it will occasionally error out. So it's best to just give it a minute. Um, but you can go through these and utilize again any of them that you would like to. Um, next, we have text. Now for their text, it's just the disclaimer that each office is independently owned and operated. Uh, we all know that generally has to be pulled into uh, most pieces of marketing. So that's easily there for you to grab. You then have logos. So they have some different logos for Keller Williams University. Um, and these are actually new. These weren't here the last time I taught this class. Uh, you have events. So primarily they just have red day. Uh, luxury logos for those luxury agents. Miscellaneous is going to be your NAR and Equal Housing Opportunity logo. Um, labs and then Keller Williams. Um, you can find some of their generic KW logos. Um, going back, next is elements. So these are going to be various icons you can use on your designs. Uh, for example, they have email, website, uh, the icon marker, phone, things like that. So you can use those for various different things. If they have any videos, which they don't, and PDF files that you can also add as assets that you may use often, um, theirs is just their style guide and design guide. And those are just taking a second to load, but we don't really need to check those out. So we'll close that. Now, next is my assets. So these are going to be your specific assets. So for example, for colors and fonts, if you've branded yourself either, either as a team or as an individual agent, you can create a color palette that goes for your um, specific branding. You can select specific fonts that you're going to use on all of your marketing to keep it consistent. Um, you can add your images here. Now these may be images that you use all the time um, or images of like your headshot, things like that. Um, that just makes it really easy for you to pull those in and use them. Um, we'll show you how to do this real fast. So if I click upload image and then I go to my device to upload one of those, I come into my desktop and I pull Scott in. I can go ahead and upload that. Super simple, super easy. Um, again, just that allows me to upload that so that I can pull it into my designs quickly. Um, next is text. So this is where it comes in handy if you have your, um, your website URL, your branded app link, um, maybe your bio if you're using that often, um, anything like that that you don't want to have to type out or remember every time. It would be super handy to have it as your text assets. So you can easily pull those in. Next is logos. Now, as you can see, I have a bunch of different Market Center specific logos. Um, if you need to access yours, we'll go through how to find those really quick and how to upload those. So for those, I like to go to KW Connect. Um, now I do wanna point out that KW Connect is different. I actually went to my profile, so let's go back. Um, 
I do want to point out that kwconnect.com is different from the connect that is available within command. So if you see connect up here, that is 100% different from this website here. Um, so in order to access your logos for your specific Marca Center, you do need to go to kwconnect.com and log in. Um, if you're logged into command, it should keep you logged in so you don't have to do that again. Um, but once we're here, if we go to resources and we come down to marketing, the first option here is going to be logos and branding. So once we're there, we can go ahead and click on that. Now, when we're here, you're going to notice that it has um, access to the style guide, um, some additional information on the ownership statement, you know, the style guide again. Um, and then you come down to Market Center logos. So this is where you can find and download your various Market Center logos. Um, so in order to do that, you can search by Market Center number or name. Um, so I'm just going to put in a random number today. And we'll pick one of these. Um, so as you can see, when you put in a number, it's going to pull up the various different offices that could be that one. Um, since I did 63, we're going to go ahead and pull platinum here. Um, so what I can do is I can preview and it will pull up that uh, logo so I can confirm that's the logo I'm looking for. Once I've done that, I can close it and then hit download. Now, once I've downloaded that, I can click that and open it. Now it opened in my other screen, so I'm just gonna extract that and open it again. And then I will pull it over for you guys. So now that I've downloaded that to my computer and I have access to that, you'll notice it has a few different folders. Um, we're gonna primarily take a look at the black and white and the CMYK. Um, so if we open those up, we will notice that there are a bunch of different variations of the platinum logo. So you'll see there's one with a white background behind it, and then you have a few that have no background. Um, so depending what design you're creating, you may want to have a white background or you may want nothing behind it, um, it's transparent. Um, that also may determine what color you want that to be. So if we're doing something that's uh, a dark background, we may not want to use this logo because you may not be able to see it. We may want to use the white to make sure that it pops. Um, but once we have those, uh, we can then upload them to our assets. Um, but first, we're going to take a look at the other folder. Within here, you'll notice the same thing. We have the colored options. Uh, so we have, again, with the white background and again with the transparent in various colors. So now that we have all of those, what we want to do is include them into our assets. Um, before we do that, though, I just want to point out on this KW Connect, there are additional KW logos, generic ones, um, that you can download and use as well. They are a little different from the ones already in the assets for KW. Um, but let's go ahead and upload those. So we come back in here, we can either create a folder and put our specific logos in there, or we can just put them right here. Um, I'm going to create a folder just because mine's getting a little busy since I do this all the time. You'll probably just keep yours within your generic folder because you should probably only have one or maybe two market centers. Um, but now I'll go ahead and open this one and upload. Now from my device, I'm going to go to my downloads. That's not working. Give me one second. Let me grab those. I don't know why I didn't pull my folder. Try this again. There it is. Okay. So now I have my folder. Now I'm going to pull in the various logos. So I'm just going to highlight all of these by clicking and dragging on my mouse and hit open. And it's going to put those here. Next, I'm going to hit uh, upload, or I could have added more and done the other half of them. Um, it doesn't matter whichever way you want to do it. Grab these, upload those. Now I have all of my platinum logos that I can easily pull into my designs when I'm creating them without having to upload them every time I want to use them.
Um, moving along, we have elements. Again, if you have specific icons that you would like to use on a regular basis, you can put those in here. Then we have videos. If you have a video you'd like that you often include in, uh, you know, email design newsletters or something like that, you can upload those here. Um, and then if you have any PDF files, you can also put those here. Now that is assets. Um, so again, those are just your easy access documents and uh, photos that you can easily pull into your designs. So we do recommend adding those. It just makes life easier um, for you. I'm going to go ahead and close this and we're going to go back to command and back to designs. So now that we've uploaded our assets, what we're going to take a look at now is creating an email signature. So in order to do that, we're going to go ahead and hit create design. For this specific design, it is a social design. It's not email. Um, when you're thinking of email, think of you're actually sending an email template. Um, so you wouldn't want to use this for the email signature. Um, but if we hit Next, we'll go into social. We do have classes on the other topics. If you want to check those out and learn more about them, you can check those out. Um, and it actually, sometimes it brings us into projects. Sometimes it brings us into templates. This is where it should bring you. Um, and once we're in here, you'll notice that you have a bunch of different categories on the left-hand side. Within those categories, you have additional categories um, with various different designs. Um, I like to just tell people when you're in here, if it's a coming soon and you want to use that specific design for just listed, you can customize these however you want. So if you like a design, go ahead and use it. Um, but for today, we're going to first take a look at business basics. Now, once you're in business basics, you'll notice we have business cards that you can create, um, email signatures, a letterhead. If you're looking for social branding, you can take a look at those. Um, they have different covers uh, and designs for Instagram or Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook. What's great about that is it's going to have them the correct size. So if you're uploading them to that specific platform, it should fit perfectly. Also, you can find some fun Zoom backgrounds if you do Zoom a lot and you need something fun behind you. Um, you can edit those and use those. But again, we're going to take a look at email signature. Now, there's only two in here. Um, so you get to kind of pick whichever one you like. Again, if you like this red one and you don't like the red background, you can customize it however you want. Um, so we're going to take a look at, we'll take a look at this one today. I usually do the white one. Um, once we hit that and we come into it, you'll notice that we have um, this section on the side. So we have images, text, logos, elements, the KWLS, um, animation, and support. Uh, now, keep in mind when you're looking at these various categories, um, you're going to also have subcategories again within that. So for images, like we were taking a look at before in the assets, you'll have where you can upload your own. If you have a photo that's not already set in as your asset, you can take a look at KWRIs. They have these, stock images and workspace. This is where we were before. And then you also have your assets. Um, same for text. You're going to have you add your own text, banners, um, which are kind of like a little bit different than regular text. You have their assets and then yours. Um, so just keep that in mind when you're looking at these. There are going to be the various ones that you may need to click back and forth between. Um, but let's go ahead and start editing this. So the first thing we want to do is swap out our photo. So if we click on this photo right here, now that we're under images and my assets, I can go ahead and drag this over. And if I like that it doesn't have a background, I can leave it. Um, I could use this one instead. Now I'm dragging and dropping. You can also use this replace image, which is two arrows, and you can go ahead and swap it that way. Um, now I'm going to put Scott back for a second. Now, if I need to crop this, let's say it's cutting off Scott's head and we need to adjust that or it's over to the side. If you double click on that, you can then adjust it. You can make it bigger if you don't like how far out it is. Um, however you want to adjust that. Um, once you have got it where you want it and you like how it looks, um, you have to hit done up here to keep those changes. Um, so super easy. 
Um, for example, if we like the one without a background and we want to put that one back, um, but we don't like the red behind it, you can most certainly add a shape and throw this here. Let's say we would just want Scott to have a white background. Instead, I can add that box, make it the exact same size as Scott's photo. And then if I come over here, I just gotta find my right one, and layer, I can move that backward, put that behind him. Now it does have a, oh, it has the outline. I probably need to adjust that. This has an outline. If you couldn't see it, there's like a little bit of purple on the edge. That's this square image, not Scott. So you'll see that up here. I can change the color um, and remove that or make it white. And that will fix that. I'm not sure why it made Scott a little blurry. Let's just delete Scott and put him back. Maybe it's just the photo. Sometimes things don't work, you guys, in command. Just keep playing with it. Um, it's not a big deal. If it, there it goes. Just didn't like that one for some reason. But now our background's gone, so it's fine. Um, but moving along, we'll move his head down. These are your email signatures. So again, if you want to customize it how you want, as long as you're within compliance with your market center and you can check with them before you start utilizing it, um, you can customize it how you would like. Um, next, we're going to go ahead and replace the signature. Now, they can sometimes be a little bit hard to click on. Um, if you keep trying to click on it, though, um, you should usually be able to. You can also zoom in down here in the right to see if it's easier to um, click on that. But once we have clicked on that logo and we go to My Assets, I can then go ahead and pull in those Platinum. Um, now this is kind of where I was talking about the logo may not show up. So if we were using this red one here, you're not gonna see that red KW very well. Um, so we may wanna just switch that to be the white one. Um, let's say that we wanna make that a little bit bigger. It's kind of small, we can do that as well. Or if you wanna move it over, and adjust it, you can put it over here instead. Um, actually, kind of like it better in the corner, but that's just a personal preference. Um, then we can start adjusting the name. Um, also another personal preference, I think that should be above. So if we go ahead and start typing, and I just double clicked on the name to go ahead and start making edits. However, I do wanna point out that there is another way to edit that text. So if you click on it, up here, you'll find that there's a typewriter option. If you were to click on that, it will bring open a box and you can go ahead and type there too. And hit save and it will go ahead and edit that. Now, with that being said, I can also pull in that information from my assets and I don't have to type it at all. And if I click on that and go to text and my assets, I could then just replace if I had my license number in there. Um, I don't, so I'm not gonna do that, but you could do that. You also get these little pop-ups every now and then that will kind of guide you through um, various pieces of command. Uh, then we would wanna edit our address here and include ours from the office. Um, I'm not gonna add one, but if you need to update that, you can also adjust this now that I move some things around and bring it up. Um, just so it looks a little better. And then when you get to down here, same thing. Um, now when you're pulling in your assets, this is where I like to point out, um, if it is a text box that has multiple different pieces of information, if you were to replace that with the phone number, it's only going to replace the one part. So for pieces like this, you may want to actually type that out or include something in your assets that has that all typed together. Um, whatever you prefer. Again, your app, if you have your app link here, that would be handy. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and throw the website there since I don't have the app. Doesn't like that right now. That's okay. 
Maybe I'm just getting click happy. Um, but once we have our email signature, how we want it, we can download it and put it into our Gmail. Um, before we do that though, I do just wanna go over some of the other features of designs, that way in case you have questions on those. Um, so we went through images and text, um, logos, elements. Again, we went over the KWLS. This would be if you're creating something for a listing and you wanna pull in information from the listing, you can do that here. Um, we may use this animation one on our next design for social posting, so we'll come back to that one. Um, but then I also want to point out up here, you have a few different things. If you're clicked on a photo, though, you, or text, you won't see those. They will change based on what you're on. Um, and I could actually remove Scott's background since I put it back on. And it should just erase that. Um, so super easy if you want to edit your headshot and remove the background. Um, but the other categories up here are to draw, if you want to physically draw on your design. Say you want to actually write your signature out. I'm going to delete those. Um, but it has a few different ones. There's also shapes if you need to pull in those. Um, and then I like to point out frames. Um, and the reason for that being is it will put a photo in that specific frame perfectly. Um, I will use that on our next design just to show you guys how it actually works. Um, and then if you want to add text again, it gives you that option. Um, now, again, once we're done with our email signature and we want to put that into our email, we can go ahead and hit this download button. Now, once we do that, I don't want this as print. I want it as either JPEG or PNG since it's going into my email. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and hit PNG and download. You'll see that it did a little download bar down here, and now it is in my email. Um, now that we've done that, I'm going to go to my KW email. So I'm already signed in. Um, so if you have not signed into your KW email, it is the same as a Gmail. Um, so you can access it through the computer at gmail.com or through your Gmail app on your phone. Um, but once we're logged in, we can hit this little gear in the top right where it says settings. We can hit see all settings. And then if we scroll down, you'll notice that there's a section for signature. Um, some people confuse this very bottom one for signature because it has this box. That is actually your vacation responder. Um, so you want to look for this here. Now, if we want to create a new one or if we want to edit the one that we currently have, I have quite a few piling up from teaching. So we're going to delete a couple of these um, and create a new. Um, so I'm going to say to 124. And then once I have that new one created, I can go ahead and put my image right here. So if I hit this little insert image and upload that from my computer, and of course it's not, where are my downloads going? Give me one second, guys. I just gotta figure out why these aren't going into my, there it is. All right, so I'm gonna, just, I'm dragging it from my other screen and dropping it, which will do the same thing. Um, if you can find it in your folder, it's just as easy. Now you'll see that I have that graphic there. It looks rather large. So if I click on that, I can adjust the size. Obviously you want to make sure that it is legible in your email. So if you need to resize it, um, you can certainly do so. Um, I think large is good. Original size is way too big, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and hit large. And then once I'm done, there is one final step that some people will forget. And that is to physically turn it on. So. Uh, you do have to set your signature defaults uh, to use it for new emails and also if you want to use it on reply or forward emails. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that on for both. And once I turn that on, I still have to hit save. Um, if you also want to add any links or text before or after your signature, you can certainly do that. Um, if I want to add that here, if I scroll up, can't type when I can't see. Um, I could put that there and that will show up before his email signature. Now, once I have that there, I go ahead and hit the save at the bottom. 
and then just a text test and make sure that's working. I can click that compose and you'll see that it pops up right here with that text. Um, so again, if you had links or something, you could add those here um, and get those included with that every time. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and take a quick look at the questions in the chat and then we will jump into our next piece. Um, recordings can be found on our YouTube channel. Um, let me pull, actually, I think I have that pulled up already. Or maybe I closed it. I'll also drop the link in the chat for you guys um, so that you have that easily. But all of our recordings for this class and all of our classes, as well as our tip videos, can be found on our YouTube channel. Looks like this, scottleroymarketing.com. Um, you can search for videos or find our most recent ones under videos. Um, it will tell you how long ago it was uploaded. Um, keep in mind, if you are searching a video, you do want to pay attention to when it was uploaded. Um, for example, it sometimes will pull a really old one and then a new one. So you want to check out that upload date. Make sure what you're getting is uh, new and current. Stop working. Um, okay. to be our let me drop that link in the chat. For some reason, there's a video playing. Um, drop that in there for everyone. Um, some of the pieces of command will not work on your iPad. I do believe designs is one of them. Um, it may depend on the size of your iPad, though. A lot of the designs functions, though, will not work on a mobile device or iPad. So you may want to try on a computer if you run into issues. All right. Um, that's all the questions I see currently. So we'll keep uh, going. Now, once I'm done, I'm going to go ahead and hit done. That is essentially saving my design. Um, it will put that right here so that I can access that and edit that later on. Let's say I get a new headshot and I want to switch that out. I can go ahead and grab that and update that. Now we're going to go back into create and social because now we want to take a look at a social design. Um, now this is can vary depending what kind of design you want to post on your social media. Um, if you want to do a just listed or a open house, um, you can definitely check out those designs. Um, if you want to introduce yourself as a new agent, you can also find a graphic and do that. Um, it's kind of however you want to do it. So for today's class, though, we're just going to take a look at creating an open house uh, graphic. Um, so I'm going to click on that open house one under listings. And then you want to make sure that the size of your graphic is the right size for what you're creating it for. So. If you're creating a design for social media, like Instagram or Facebook, um, if you were to come in here and start editing a flyer size graphic and post that to your Facebook, most likely it's going to cut off some of that depending how you posted it. Um, just because most of those are not meant for those long sizes. Um, so generally when doing social media, I recommend using a square. The reason for that is it works the best for both Instagram and Facebook. Um, so you can use it for multiples, um, but you could of course use social wide or social stories if you're making a story, which would be great to advertise an open house. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and like I said, stick with the square and I'm just gonna pick the one that I like. So for today's class, let's just grab this one here and we're gonna hit use. Now we can start customizing this uh, based on how we'd like to have it created. Um, so we can first start with swapping out our logo. Um, again, we're just gonna go ahead and pull that platinum logo in from over here. Um, and I'm going, and I clicked on the wrong one, I think, or didn't click on it all the way. I'm gonna go ahead and use the same one they have, and I'm just gonna swap it out with the replace image so that it makes it the same size. However, if I do want to readjust that, make it bigger, put it by the disclaimer, um, whatever you want to do, you can certainly do that. Um, sometimes I prefer these to be uh, near the bottom. Again, 
this is your design, so you get to kind of customize it how you'd like um, and what is visually appealing to you. Um, so just keep that in mind. Next, we can start editing this, uh, the rest of this information. So uh, the first thing you'd probably want to do since you're advertising uh, an open house is you'd want to grab maybe an image from the open house. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and head to the KWLS and I'm going to switch to MLS number. Uh, the reason for that being is that this is pulling from every MLS that is used. So you want to be very specific. Otherwise, it may take you a while to find the one that you want. Um, now, with that being said, I don't have a listing or an open house coming up, so I'm not going to search by that, but that is how we recommend doing it. Um, again, it just saves you some time. Uh, I do have a listing handy, though, that I snagged earlier, and we will go ahead and pull that up. Now, as you'll see, again, when I'm searching my address, it's going to pull up a ton of different ones. So um, I'm going to go ahead and select this one. And we're going to just grab this photo, uh, any of these photos. But once I am clicked on this one again, I can go ahead and do the replace. And it will throw that image right there into that exact same space. Now, again, if I do want to adjust the cropping on that, I can certainly do so and zoom in a little bit, um, whatever looks the best to you. Now, once I have that, again, I can also pull in listing details. So if I want to replace the beds, I can then also click this listing detail and find that specific piece of information and swap that um, so that I don't have to remember all of that. However, we do recommend uh, making sure the information you're including is accurate. So you just want to double check that before you're plugging that in. Every once in a while, it may be too big for the current text box, so you may have to drag that over. Um, this one's putting that square feet at the back, so if I just delete that, it should fix that for me. And then I can readjust that. If I want to put that price in there, I can also adjust that. It will be over here. Um, the address, all of that good information. Um, then obviously you want to add uh, adjust the date and time. So let's put this for this Sunday, which is, oh, I cannot type February 4th. Um, and we'll leave it as 11 to 2. Um, now, again, I said that you can add, since this is being posted on social media and that is not a flat image, um, we could add some animation that will play when we upload that to Facebook or Instagram. So let's play around with that. If we take a look at animation, we can pick how we want that to come in. Do we want it to bounce in, swing in? Um, however you kind of want to do it. If you hover over it, it will kind of show you a little bit of what that looks like. Um, so you can kind of figure out which one you like the best. Um, I'm going to try this one. And then... You can also do this one here. Let's do that one. Um, now, if I want to check out what that looks like, there is a play animation button right up here, and I can preview what that looks like. Now, it's real fast. You can't hardly see it here, but it is a little bit slower, I think, on your design. Um, and we'll take a look at when we actually post it. Um, so this doesn't have photo or agent information. If you wanted to add that, you most certainly can. This is where I'm going to show you how to use that frame real quick. Um, I'm actually going to move this down just so we can add this. Now, in order for me to grab both of those, I just uh, used shift on my keyboard and clicked on my mouse um, in case you're wondering. But now I'm going to click frame and I'm going to pull in the circle um, because I want to add my agent information or my agent photo up here. Um, you don't have to. I'm j I just kind of want to show you how to use this. Um, now, if we come to my assets um, and we plug in that photo, if I just hit that replace image, it's going to put that photo into that perfect little circle. So um, again, instead of just clicking the photo and adding it, um, it just makes it look a little bit nicer. And again, if I wanted to also add my agent information, phone number, anything like that, of course I could. Um, also, some people don't like these little dots. If you don't like those, you can delete them or move them. 
Um, say you just want it to show up down here. Um, you can certainly do that however you'd like. But once we have this ready to go, um, if we hit the download button again, and if I want those animations to show, this does need to be download video and GIF. Uh, so we're going to do that one so that we can show you how to upload that to uh, social posts. All right. So now that we have that downloaded, it's downloading over here, as you can see. Videos will sometimes take just a little bit longer than others to download. Not a big deal. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and hit done. And then for this one, I'm going to head to campaign. So I do want to walk you guys through how to upload that social post so that you can add it to your Facebook. Um, I do want to point out social post is not a paid ad. If you do want to do that, we do have a class on paid ads as well that you can check out. Um, but for today, we're going to do social posts. So under campaigns, we're going to hit create a campaign and we're going to do social posts. Um, now, the primary difference between these two, social posts is going to be on Facebook, Instagram, and people that already follow you, know you, um, are going to be the ones that are seeing that. Um, paid ad is going to be an advertisement that is running that um, will go to other people that don't necessarily know you or follow you. So social post. We then decide which page we want to be connected to. You do need to get these connected within your settings first. Um, and your Instagram does need to be linked to your business page. Um, they do have to be business pages in order for you to connect those. Um, and the reason for that being is Facebook has their um, advertising guidelines. So you cannot post that on social or on personal. But once we have those selected, um, let's say we want to do both Facebook and Instagram. I'm going to go ahead and click all three of them. Um, then we can go ahead and add our content. So here is where you'll add that. You can go ahead and add media. Now, sometimes this will work, but it does not always. So bear with me if it doesn't. This is the reason I downloaded it, because every once in a while, it won't come over. Um, and that's okay. I can simply grab that from my downloads and pull it in. Then I can go ahead and add my text, um, whatever you want to put here. Uh, you can use your little emojis, however you want to do that. Um, we'll do the heart eyes. And it will show you a preview over here on the right-hand side. Now, it's going to show you both Facebook and Instagram. So you can see both of those. Again, that's the reason I chose to use a square image. It just goes best between the two of them. Um, and you can also play that now and see what it looks like. And we can see that again. And as you can see, it kind of goes uh, over and over. So we'll go away and then come back. Um, so that is what that looks like. So super easy. If we wanted to do the flat one, it's the same thing. You just upload the, the image instead of the video. And then we can either schedule the post to go out at a specific time. So I'm going to delete this afterwards. So I'm going to put it for March 1st at 10 a.m. Or you can simply do publish immediately. So it will go out right away. Um, if I do March 1st, I can then do schedule that post. It's again going to show me just a quick preview and I can play that again to watch it and hit schedule post. Now, once I'm done, it's going to bring me into the campaign's social post section where I can view all of my upcoming posts that I have scheduled um, or past posts that I've had if I have any. Um, I can come here and check those out as well. I can also view drafts if I have any that are pending to post. As you can see, I have some old ones. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go delete that one so I can show you guys how to do that real quick. Went too far. Um, if I want to edit or delete, I can certainly do both of those things. I'm going to go ahead and delete it. Um, and then go back. 
So you can create, uh, like I said, for uh, as many days out as you want. It's totally up to you. You can use those. Um, I do want to point out they also have some little quick posts that you guys can snag and use. They already have images and text that you can go ahead and just hit that little arrow. Um, and it will allow you to go ahead and schedule those out. So if you just want some content to push out, you can do that as well. Um, it will give you that preview and you can then do the same thing. I'm gonna do save draft on this one. And that is, that is it. It will go ahead and keep that so you can go ahead and post it. Um, Got about 14 minutes left. Let's just take a look at these chat. How do I get rid of those black dots? That's a great question. I could have showed that. Um, if I don't like those dots at all and I want to get rid of them, um, super simple to do so. I can just click on them um, and then I can hit the little trash can or I can hit delete on my keyboard and it will get rid of those. Um, I don't have as many options. Example, trifold. Um, Yvette, are you talking about in the templates section? Um, that is mostly all of our content that I want to cover with you guys today. So if you have questions, feel free to stick around. If you don't, feel free to go ahead and jump off. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop record so that I can answer any questions that there may be um, and help you guys out with any of those. But if you don't have questions, again, feel free to jump off. Thank you so much for joining us today.